Yes, hello, Jan, live. We are going out here, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a busy, busy last couple of days, and um, we've uh, we've redone a, a complete back end for our event mastery classes. Uh, we have redesigned pages. You know, it's been it's been a real hoot, if you know what I mean. But hey. This is uh, Jan Rognerud, founder of chaosmap.com, and I wanted to share with you something a little bit different today. But before I do, this is uh, a uh, pitch, by the way. It's a free workshop, so you're uh, welcome to uh, take a look-see here. <clears throat> if you go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y uh, forward slash event mastery class, uh, you'll get access to it. Um, now, what I should say here is, uh, we have actually a, um, uh, a number of great uh, groups here, and we are getting awesome feedback from not only our group, but from other people who are coming across the podcast. It's actually really moving uh, right along at a nice clip. And by the way, there's some uh, really good folks who have not only subscribed, but um, you know, given some great reviews, uh, which is awesome. But what I mean to say is, I really appreciate all that you do, and not just you know listening to me uh, yabber about media and marketing here, uh, and talking about business and growth, etc., uh, but also just really contributing to the com uh, community. Uh, I forget where I heard this, but the expression is, uh, "When you win, everybody wins." Right? It's it's sort of a mutual thing. And today, I wanted to talk about this um, customer appreciation, what it really means. As I mentioned, the feedback that I get, that we get, the groups that we have, and uh, all the followers out on the face various Facebook groups, but also on Twitter, LinkedIn, and the B2B network, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's nice, right? It gives you a good feeling of a sense of community. However, here's the thing. Customer appreciation is something that I think we don't talk enough about. Um, you know, I see a lot about, you know, me, 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 you know, me mails, et cetera, right? But how about the clients? How about the customers? How about the patients, uh, the folks that serve you? And so I thought this was a really appropriate here today because, again, as I said, we've been uh, offline here for a few days. I uh, actually didn't broadcast yesterday, which is kind of amazing, <clears throat> even though it was Memorial Day. I uh, like to come live each day, but um, we, we've been so busy here and launching this and the feedback and the um, the level of engagement that we receive from uh, our courses, our trainings, and our done-for-you services is most appreciated. But here, I'm going to dig into this now. I've been yabbering about uh, <laughs> the customer appreciation. Here's what it really means, Right. And if you're coming in live here, you'll see a big old uh, banner here. It says customer appreciation. But before we get into what it really means, <clears throat> I'm going to take you back here a little bit. And uh, these are some slides from our fine uh, folks over at SuperOffice. Uh, not all current, but you know what? This deals with human emotions and the human psyche. And while some of the data points will change based on you know current data, 2019 versus a few years ago, uh, we can we can draw some parallels here. We can see that these metrics are not going to change over time that much. Um, in fact, let's talk about it here. Customer tension, right? Why companies lose customers? Well, I don't think we need to be a rocket science to figure that out, right? So here on this slide, uh, the customer dies 1%, right? Customer moves away 3%. Customer influenced by friends 5%, right? Somebody says, hey, company A is great, but you know who's better? Company B. That kind of thing, right? Customer lured away by competition. You know, it's a dog eat the dog world out there. It's a competitive marketplace, clearly. Some more aggressive than others, but you know, you're gonna have customers lured away. Customer dissatisfied with product, 14%. You know, if that's 10% now or 30% now, uh, you get the drift, right? It's the trend lines here that we're looking at. Customer turned away by an attitude of indifference on part of the service provider, 68%, guys and girls. Big clue here, um, the indifference. You know, we're dealing with customer service here, but it's also, you know what? I've done my job nine to five. I've serviced my tickets here. I'm done, I'm out, right? So very compelling that first slide there. Now, next one here is we're kind of getting a little warmer here to 
my main point that I'm driving home here today. Uh, and this gets into what determines happiness, right? And we're not necessarily here talking about, hey, are you happy this morning? Did you wake up happy? We're talking about engaging with customers, clients, patients, et cetera, right? So we're talking about customer appreciation. And here we can see uh, genetics, 50%, external circumstances, 10%. Actions and thoughts, 40%. Uh, this is from University of California, uh, Riverside by Sonia Lubomorski, PhD. So it must be right. Well, again, we're seeing, you know, patterns here. Uh, what determines happiness? You know, actions and thoughts. And the reason why I'm saying this is getting warmer to my main point is you'll hear about it in a few more minutes um, uh, if you just hang on here, because I think this is pretty profound. At least this is how it relates to me as we... Uh, can I close out the broadcast here in a few minutes? But if you'd like to learn more about <clears throat> how we do some of these things in terms of giving value and providing insights, um, we have a workshop right now. It's uh, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash event mastery class, free class. You can head over there and take a look, see, and you'll kind of understand a little bit more about what this means, customer appreciation. And by the way, customer appreciation starts with your first touch point, but it doesn't end there. It's a complete 360 cycle. Now, one of the things that I thought was very interesting is what are things that service providers could do to prevent switching? Again, stats from a few years ago here, but uh, let's talk about it. So the, the high items here are in blue on this chart. If you're listening on the broadcast, then I'll read it out to you. But resolving my issue in the first contact, you know, addressing the concern, right? 68%. Contacting me, contacted me proactively to let me know about ways to enhance my experience with them, 55%. Recognized and rewarded me for doing more business with them, 51%. You know, uh, clearly a lot of opportunity here to do a lot better in terms of business, but, you know, engaging with your customers and appreciating them. 45% uh, is offered me better service and support option via my mobile device. 44 is offered me preferential treatment such as platinum, gold service levels. And so these are kind of the major buckets for what service providers could do to print switching. And these are among global respondents who agreed that the service provider could have done more or done something differently in order to have kept them, right? So um, it's kind of interesting to see this. And um, these charts are all over the internet. And so I'm just using this chart uh, from my uh, fine friends at SuperOffice. This is true in any industry, not the exact numbers, but this kind of thinking, right? Hey, if I'm reaching out to you and I have an issue, did you resolve it on the first contact? Yes or no? Can we do a better job there? Yes or no? Is there a better process or a system we can put in place for handle, handling that better? Yes or no, right? Well, of course there is. And here's where it gets interesting. You know, there needs to be focus on this from management and from the top. And yes, there is, but how much and how often is it addressed, you know, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, or yeah, we do qu quarterly reviews, annual reviews, uh, you know, half year reviews. What is it? What does it look like? What more can be done here? And really also some of these things that can be done with technology now that doesn't impact, you know, a huge expense to make this happen. So uh, I urge you to take a look at that. So let's continue here. Something that is very simple to do. Uh, in this regard is thankful emails, you know, hey, I'm thankful for you. I appreciate you type of emails. And they are open and click more. You know, just just thanks is like getting a 35% um, uh, open rate. And that is a 14.4% uh, increase from, you know, no thanks, meaning there is no thanks, right? Uh, click through rate, same thing, the thanks type of emails and, and contextual messaging gets, you know, 1.95% higher than when there's no thanks uh, embedded, right? So just taking a moment to say thanks and, and be thankful uh, for their customers uh, matters. And you don't have to be cheesy here. Uh, this doesn't have to be a, a sort of a overly sort of in your face situation. Uh, but if you are, um, you know, interacting with any business online and they have a, a service where they're actually helping you through a support system, then you would want to see these patterns and that they actually care. And uh, I've had some recent interactions online that they really have shown me that they care. Uh, 
it really means a lot. You just sit back with a good feeling and you want to refer business. You want to you know, give them a 10 star for the chat interaction or the ticket interaction, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, by the way, um, one of the things that I talk a lot about here is the ability to give back and we want to give back. And we do that in the forms of workshops and trainings. And if you go to bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash event mastery class, you learn about how to run workshops, uh, seminars, conferences, concerts, uh, et cetera. And in fact, we show you systems and processes in there that you can use for a multitude set of businesses in terms of those processes. Yes, yeah, some of the details and tactics will change, but whether it's for an event, a workshop, conference, or if it's uh, something that you're doing in terms of uh, professional services area, um, take a look. Uh, in fact, you'll get some great ideas on how some of these things can work uh, in your marketplace if you wanna expand into those areas. So let's dig in here a little further. Um, another chart here from uh, 2014, again, a few years ago, most effective tactics for improving customer lifetime value. The big red line here, the big border here is personalized interactions. And we're talking about email and on-site. So again, the human connection here uh, as well as, you know, the person that sits behind the desk who sends out emails, uh, that is not automated. Now, automation cannot get past that. That's going to have to be part of a, a daily, uh, you know, ritual, <laughs> as it were. Uh, but uh, in truth, having that extra edge in terms of personalization and actually getting a sense that there's a real person behind there, well, that's going to be critical. Personalized interactions overall. Uh, this is never going to go away. That's why, for instance, videos can be a great way for you to interact. If you are sending out emails, uh, set up a picture of the customer rep. Maybe there's a personalized video from the, the VP of the department or even the CEO that speaks about a particular thing that happened, right? We talk a lot about reputation management. We do that uh, also at the firm, at the agency. And clearly having the sponsorship and the sign off and also the the uh, uh, involvement of the executives from the top is going to be critical uh, in those types of situations as well. But you can use this throughout uh, to think about how I can enhance that user experience and that engagement and that connection uh, that uh, customers want. And I'm not going to read through all of these uh, here, but uh, there are some other ones. Uh, more effective use of data, uh, customer segmentation, personas, of course, Focus on online experience, you know, websites, lo loyalty programs, etc. Uh, improved pricing for repeat purchases. Uh, many, many items here that uh, will allow you to improve overall. But at the at sort of at the top here is the improvement of customer services in in general. So here we go. Now we're coming up to my main point for today, and this is customer appreciation. What it really means. So I've talked a lot about what. Um, you know, uh, companies and individuals can do through systems and processes and to reach out and create that personal connection, create that bond. But um, while that's all good and in fact needs to be in place, the one thing that we forget in all of this is you, you, the person, you, the individual, you, the, the driver behind all the engines, whether that is, uh, you know, picking up the phone and answering customer questions to the solopreneur sweating in a back office somewhere at his house or her house, uh, or you know a small team somewhere in a uh, um, you know a loft in uh, downtown LA or in New York or somewhere in the Midwest or Hong Kong, Norway, Brazil, Australia, it's global, right? So this applies to all of you. It applies to me, and the answer is, and if you're seeing the screen, you know it already. It's gratitude gratitude folks how simple is that the quality of being thankful that is one of the descriptions here you know wikipedia says it all right number two readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness so you know this is huge in fact if you picked any week of the month and went for seven days and showed continuous gratitude towards your customers clients patients and that includes your family, your friends, and you took full responsibility for everything, uh, even though that's gonna be hard to do for some of you and extremely hard for others. Uh, pushing through a seven day challenge like that 
with this gratitude, uh, you know, word imprinted on your forehead and thinking about what that means for you, no matter where you're at, um, you know, personally or in business, this is really the main point of the podcast here today. And um, this is where I really want to, again, thank you and reach out to you, um, customers and clients of mine, and also through the agency. I uh, really appreciate all that you do and uh, the years that we work together. Uh, it really means a lot. And so I'm very grateful and appreciative and uh, couldn't have done it without you. That's how it goes here. So anyway, this is um, Jan here coming to a close for today's broadcast. Uh, a little bit different than normal, but uh, customer appreciation. It does mean that you improve systems and processes as we've gone through looking at some of those data points, but really start with the basic uh, thing here, which is you, gratitude. Now, uh, one of the things that I mentioned throughout this broadcast is we like to give back as well. And we uh, do have a free workshop at bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash event mastery class. And that's where we show you how you can run your events, um, get tickets sold to events, uh, fill those seats, uh, butts in seats, as it were, um, you know, for conferences, workshops, seminars, uh, you know, concerts. Um, it's a great way to connect people and bind people and network and uh, show appreciation for the people that you work for and work with and the companies across the globe. And uh, I really, we do a lot with events, but I really like events because it's such a people uh, oriented business, right? Um, I mean, once you're at the show, whatever it is for you and you're sitting in the seat or you're in the back, uh, uh, back you know, backstage, or you're actually one of the folks going on, uh, going on, on stage, uh, it's the ultimate. And so talk about gratitude. Again, very, very thankful for all that you do. And again, thank you for visiting here today. And thank you for joining the workshop. And we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys and gals. Later.